This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 28. It says, if then God so clothed the, uh, the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye, little, uh, uh, o ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat and, or what ye shall drink, neither be of doubt of a doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father uh, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. All right. But check it out. Verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. All right. Don't be carnal. Don't worry about what you're going to eat and you, you, what you're going to drink and basically being, uh, 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 the, you know, the gratification of the senses. All right. Don't you worry about that. All right. Because it says the, the Lord know what you, you know, what you need, what's essential. All right. Because the scriptures talk about with food and raiment, be there with content because I go to prepare a place for you. All right. Wait ye upon me, the Lord said. We ain't got to be like these other nations and all about the gratification of the sen senses, voluptuousness. All right. No, because it says rather seek ye the kingdom. All right. The kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you because in the kingdom, we're going to uh, have everything and we're going to be able to enjoy everything in righteousness. All right. And it's going to be beautiful. And all these things that, you know, one seeks after now, it says, man, all those things are going to be added to you. And plus more than more than your heart could even imagine. All right. And so uh, so basically it says that, the you know, the nations of this world seek after basically carnality and to the gratification of the senses. All right. The nations of the world seek after that. Not you Israelites. All right, because you're a special people that I got something for you. All right, you just have to go through this right now. Okay. Um, carrying on, because once again, it's all about that kingdom. That kingdom. And then guess what? <clears throat> Here in Daniel, it talks about, you know, once all the kingdoms before our Lord and Savior comes back, because it talks about this, this, uh, this statue. All right. Then, you know, Daniel went to, uh, breaking it down and giving the understanding. All right. Of this statue. Okay. And it, what it represented. Okay. And so it was these nations that were going to be in rulership of the earth. All right. This is the kingdom of men down here on the earth. And the Lord giveth it to whomsoever he will, according to his plan, according to his will. All right. But check it out at the end of it all. All right. At the bottom of, uh, uh, of this statue, at the end, right before the Lord comes back. All right. So it says this, Daniel chapter two, verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. And that's being set up through his men come returning to our ways, the ways of life and rehearsing that. OK, so this is happening right now. It says. And in uh, the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. All right. This is the kingdom of heaven that's going to be filled with all good things ruled by the Israelites exclusively. No other nation will be in a position of rulership and having the law, statutes and commandments written in their minds and their hearts. No other nation will have that. All right. Brother David Lynn. No other nation will have that. It says it, it shall not be left to other people. All right. Like this first heaven and this first earth. All right. That's slated for ultimate downfall. All right. <clears throat> all right. This is the kingdom that's going to be inherited by the Israelites. All right. You go into that word. Matter of fact, let me keep going. Yep. Because 
this is uh so we talked about this kingdom right here that we just continuously read about and then it says hey the other nations let them have this you know they worried about you know carnality and the gratifications of the senses all right you israelites all right you children of god which makes you god you seek the kingdom of heaven where you're going to be in rulership and it's going to be filled with all good things that's what you seek after so right now, what are we doing? Rehearsing the righteous acts, doing the best that we can right now. All right. But this is a uh, second Edris seven verse nine. It says, if this city talking about the kingdom now were given unto a man for an inheritance. All right. Inheritance. If he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so is Israel's portion. It's the Israelites portion to go through the straight gate right now in this present evil world. And we don't have an inheritance with this present evil world. All right. We have to go through. And overcome and go through all the necessary experiences that's going to purify and perfect us. David, all right? This is what this is about right now. This present evil world that's given over into these heathens, all right? This is not for us. This is for us to just go through these experiences, which he said, this is the, hey, enter ye in at the straight gate, the position of difficulty, all right? Because this is what you have to go through while being in wicked flesh, you gods are in wicked flesh, just like a regular mortal man. And you have to experience this and not succumb to it, but overcome it. But this is the training ground right here and now. And this is the good fight of faith right now that you're fighting against your flesh. You're fighting against <clears throat> all uh, left hand side, evil wickedness. All right. Starting off with your flesh. All right. That's why it says uh, uh, resist the devil and he shall flee. We went into that uh, lesson um, that uh, one of the brothers from Holland did. And I did a response called be resistant. All right. So the Israelites must be resistant to this flesh and all of what this present evil world has to offer and being voluptuousness and the gratification of the senses. All right. And gratifying that which is the weak nature. It says renounce corruption for us. Put off the weak nature for us Israelites. All right. Endure to the end until our Lord uh, uh, comes back and gives us our inheritance, which is this city. All right. This kingdom, which we just read in Daniel. All right. That is going to be a everlasting kingdom that shall stand forever because the law, statutes and commandments, the ways of life is going to be written in our minds and our hearts. That is our inheritance, part of our heritage. Matter of fact, let's get inheritance because it says if this city talking about the kingdom of heaven, all right, that's a eternal kingdom, an everlasting rulership, all right, in righteousness. If this were given to a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then he said unto me, even so is Israel's portion. It's Israel's portion that we have an inheritance laid up for us, but we have to go through this present evil world and overcome it. Go through the spiritual fire first. All right. This is what we have to go through. All right. This is a part of our inheritance. All right. The inheritance. This is the definition of inheritance. It says uh, something uh, that is inherited, inherited. Um, the genetic characters transmitted from parent to offspring. All right. Who is our parent? The most high God, the creator. And he said that Israel is his his son, even his firstborn, that we are the children of God. All right. We're the offspring of a God making us gods. Right. But now we're in this present evil world, which is our training ground to perfect us. All right. Um, it says uh, the act or fact of inheriting by succession. All right. If by succession or uh, genetically 
It says portion, birthright. All right, see, it's just said our portion. Even so is Israel's portion. This is our inheritance that we're going to have a kingdom that's uh, an everlasting kingdom filled with all good things. That's ours. That's our birthright. That's we, you know, that was passed down to us. And it went from Abraham, Isaac to Jacob. All right. Who are the Israelites? All right. It says a uh, portion birthright heritage. All right. This is our heritage. Matter of fact, the Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 17 and 11, it says, uh, right, it says, beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for a heritage. Uh, the law of life for a heritage. This is our heritage. Okay? Um, going to... Uh, Sirach 45, Sirach 45, and uh, I'll start at the top. It says, and he brought out of him a merciful man, which found favor in the sight of all flesh, even Moses. All right, talking about Moses, beloved of God and beloved of God and men, men whose memorial is blessed. He made him like to the glorious saints. And magnified him so that his enemy stood in fear of him. By his words, he caused the wonders to cease. He made him glorious in the sight of kings and gave him a commandment for his people and showed him part of his glory. He sanctified him in his faithfulness and meekness and chose him out of all men. He made him to uh, hear his voice and brought him into the dark cloud and gave him commandments before his face, even the law of life and knowledge that he might teach Jacob his covenants and Israel his judgments. You can't get around that, uh, David Lynn. All right. The law of life, which is given to us for a heritage, all right, the law of life and knowledge that he might teach Jacob his covenants and Israel his judgments, all right? You can't get around that, man. All right, this is for the Israelites exclusively. What's the law? The law, statutes, and commandments that was given exclusively. We read in Deuteronomy uh, uh, 4, all right, 5, 6, and 7, and then we read in uh, 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 Psalms 147 and 19, the Lord have not dealt so with any nation. He gave his word, his, these law, statutes, and commandments, his judgments, his statutes unto Israel, the Israelites exclusively. No other nation. Okay? No other nation. All right? This is our, that's why I said, so put off the weak uh, uh, nature. Because what is, what is our, if, if, the, uh, if the flesh and th this corruption, all right, and transgressing the law is is weak nature. Then what is strength? All right. Well, Isaiah fifty two. Isaiah fifty two and one. It says, "Awake, awake! Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city." For henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. All right. So it says, awake, awake. The scriptures in uh, uh, Romans, it says, awake, awake. It is high time to awake out of sleep. All right. And being sleep and drunken with the philosophies and the customs and the ways of this world and man. OK, awake, awake. Put on thy strength. All right. What is our strength? These this what this way are this wisdom, law, statutes, and commandments. All right, because matter of fact, it says uh Isaiah 33 and 6 for wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and the strength of thou thy salvation. All right, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right, it says, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. What, what is our, our our weakness? This flesh. What is our strength? This wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which has laws, statutes, and commandments. That's righteous wisdom. All right. 
put on thy beautiful garments. All right. Matter of fact, uh, Joel 2. Joel 2 and 13 says this. It says, uh, and rend your heart and not your garments and turn, which this turn, I'm pretty sure is the Hebrew word shawab, which means return unto the Lord your God. For he is grace, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repented uh, him of the evil. So rend your heart. All right. Rend your your ways, your mind. All right. Rend your mind in the way of a man. All right. And not your garments. All right. What is our garments? It put on the scripture says put on. Therefore, as the elect, our garments is this wisdom, knowledge and understanding. All right. Um, let me see what this one is. Right. This is a uh, revelation chapter uh, 16 and 15. It says, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. All right. And you don't have this truth. OK, because it says uh, uh, blessed is he that watcheth, watches for the signs of the times, the prophecies. All right. And he that keepeth his garments. All right. Which is our strength, this wisdom, knowledge and understanding. That's why the scripture says, hold fast to that, uh, 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 hold fast to that which thou hast till I come. All right. This wisdom, knowledge and understanding, this truth that when he come, that he may find you with wisdom, knowledge and understanding. All right. That he may find you with that that wedding garment on. Because remember in the Gospels, he said, all right, that he didn't have a wedding garment and he was cast to out of darkness. All right. This is our wisdom, knowledge and understanding. This is our garments. All right. That only the Israelites can return to. And we understand that only the elect of the nation of Israel is going to return to put on our beautiful garments. All right. Clothed upon with wisdom, knowledge and understanding this truth. All right. That's what it's all about. And that's it's only exclusively for us. All right. Because when he come, that's why he said that ye may uh, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness. What is what's made us special and separate and a holy people uh, uh, separate from the other nations in the first place? Our ways, our law, statutes and commandments made us that holy people. So now we got to rehearse that to be found holy and what's godliness, obedience to the most high God and his order and what he say is righteous. All right. That was given exclusively to the Israelites. And that's why my last scripture, I believe this Baruch chapter four and one, it says this is the book of the commandments of God of the, and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. All so, but such as leave it shall die. Of you, this, it says, "Turn ye thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thine honor unto another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee unto a strange nation." What's profitable unto us? All right. Well. To, to rule with law, statutes, and commandments. To keep what's profitable unto us. To keep these law, statutes, and commandments. That ye may live. All right? And to, to, to do it perfectly, it makes you a God. All right? And that's... It says, give not thine honor unto another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee, unto a strange nation. David Lynn, you trying to give what's profitable unto uh, unto us Israelites, all right, and ultimately the, all the world, all right, unto another nation. And like the Apostle Kabar went into, when they in rulership, they ain't trying to give you part of that rulership. When these other nations been in rulership, they wasn't worried about you and you being in rulership with them. No, you were subjects unto them, all right? That's a royal kingly mindset in people uh, to have to be a king. You must have subjects to rule over. All right. The, in, in matter of fact, um, 
this Baruch chapter 2 verse uh, 30. It says, for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people talking about the Israelites, our people. It says, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And that's starting off with the elect of the nation of Israel. And they shall know that I am the Lord, their God, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. He's going to rest his Holy Spirit upon his men. And then those that are going to take heed to the prophets. Verse 32, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the ways of their fathers. All right. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and those that stem from them, which sin before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land. I will bring them again into the land, which I promise with the oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. Lords. What's a lord? A ruler. All right. We're going to rule because that is our inheritance. Ours exclusively. No other nation. We're going to be lords of it, of it because we're going to rule for eternity. All right. Like it says in that uh, uh, Daniel 2 that I read. All right. Because we're going to have the law, statutes and commandments written in our minds and our hearts. All right. And that's profitable for us. All right. It says, and I will increase them and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. It's simple. All right. It's simple. And it's totally the best thing that could ever happen. All right. For all of existence that the Israelites, the children of God, all right, who are gods themselves when they're perfected and in their right mind, they're going to rule righteously forever because we're going to be programmed. That's only for us. All right. That's only for us. That's why it says right here in Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, after these days we're in right now. Saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and their hearts and I will write them into uh, uh, the uh, I will put my laws into their minds and write them into their hearts and I will be unto them a God and they shall be unto me a people. Same thing we just read in that Baruch and, you know, we're going to uh, 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 rule. OK, and that's why it says that it shall no more be said in this uh, Jeremiah This is Jeremiah 16 and uh, 15. It says, uh, no, 14. There, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel from the land of the north and all of the lands, whether they were, uh, uh, where the Lord have driven them. And I will bring them again into their land and uh, that I gave unto their fathers. All right. That is about to happen when the Lord comes, redeemed his people and saves the elect first and foremost. All right. It's no more going to be said that the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel from the land uh, uh, of Egypt. All right. Ancient Egypt. All right. It says this is the uh, uh, this is the, the Lord liveth that brought the children from the land of the north. Where are we? North America and from all the lands, whether he had scattered us. All right. All over the world. All right. My last one. That's why this scripture says this second address chapter uh, uh, 15 and 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt because this place called America is uh, is modern day spiritual Egypt, spiritual Babylon. Right. And it calls this place that uh, throughout the scriptures. All right. And here it is again. Uh, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, talking about America, but I will bring them out with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So as he did to ancient Egypt, he's going to do it again in this modern day spiritual Egypt called America. As before, and I will destroy all the land thereof. And that's what's going to happen to America. All right. And this is what it's all about. So we can get set up to rule for eternity. Only the Israelites. 
All right. So I'm going to end it there. Lord willing, that was edifying. With that, I'm going to give all praises, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you I can push in this word and truth and sincerity. With that, Shalom, Baba, Baba.